Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Amy. You might already know me from my travel Instagram, Spellbound Travels. Uh, so as you've seen from the title, I have a pretty crazy story I'm going to share with you today. But first, I'm just going to do a quick intro about me. So let's get into that first. So I've been traveling for a few years on and off now. I started in 2016 when I went on exchange to Australia. And before that, I just traveled around with a friend a little bit. And that was the first time I'd really traveled without family. So I started a travel blog at the time known as Dreamy of Elsewhere, where I just kind of documented what I was doing, just mostly to have memories for myself. And then ever since it's kind of grown and I've taken it to Spellbound Travels, changed the name in my website and have traveled to almost nearly 20 countries, a lot of the time solo. So I'm not really sure where this channel is going to go because at the moment it's a little hard to travel and I think I'm going to be staying in Toronto for a little bit longer. But at the mean in the meantime, I'm going to be doing a few more story times similar to this one. So if you like this one, make sure you leave a comment and like and subscribe for new videos coming. And um, yeah, after that I might do some budget hacks, trip itineraries, stuff like that. Just let me know what you would want and I will try to make that happen. Okay, so let's get into the real story and why you guys clicked on this video. Honestly, I'm a little bit scared to share the story just because the person in the story is actually terrifying, but I'm just going to use a different name, so we're going to call her Emily for the sake of the story. So to set the scene, it was 2017, I had just broken up with my ex of five years from high school and university, and I just wanted to get away, I wanted to go somewhere and travel. So I decided that Iceland would be a good place to go when I found a few really cheap tickets um, with Wow Air, who I don't think is around anymore, but at the time it was a great deal, so I hopped on it, I was like, great, let's do this, I want to go somewhere new. And it was kind of a bad time because it was in the middle of a semester, my last semester at university, and I didn't have anyone to really go with, and I hadn't traveled by myself before. It, I traveled with a friend, so I was looking for a friend to come with me, and after asking all my friends that I lived with, everyone I knew that was close to me, and they couldn't go, I decided to venture out a little bit and ask people who were more acquaintances instead of friends, which was my first mistake. So in my attempt to find someone to come with me, I ended up asking Emily, who was an old coworker who I didn't really know so well, but I figured it would be fine since we seemed to get along pretty good at work. So we book everything together. We book the flights, we book the Blue Lagoon, which you have to book in advance, and we got one of the last spots, and we book our hostel. So everything's done. We're leaving a week from the day we booked it. So it wasn't a lot of time. We get to the airport, and when we got to the airport, everything was okay, but I could kind of I had this feeling something was a little off with her. It wasn't really a good feeling. I guess it was foreshadowing what was really going to happen. So then we take off. We are on our way to Iceland. It's okay on the flight. Everything's good. We get to our hostel and as soon as we get there, I can't remember exactly what happened, but I remember Emily kind of snapping on me and being a just getting a bad feeling again, once again, that something was weird with her and that I wasn't probably going to go the way I wanted it to go this trip. So I was a little bit anxious, but I kind of set that aside for the time being and was like, let's just do this. Like, I just want to have a good time. So we get to our room and everything's fine. It was like a 10 person dorm room. So there were a lot of other people in the room and I started meeting them here and there. So then nighttime rolls around and it, Emily thinks it's a good idea to have a few drinks. And I was down for that. I was like, okay, sure, like, why not? It, I don't know if it was a weekend or not, but we were just like, whatever, let's have a few drinks. Let's go to the hot tub at the hostel. So we have a few drinks and we're getting to know people who are in our room, staying at the same place and everything's going well. I get a little bit tired and I think it was probably around midnight or a little bit later and Emily is really drunk, like pretty drunk already, but I was just like, are you okay? I'm going to go to bed. Do you have a key to get back into the room? And another thing happened here. She started to kind of snap at me again, 
getting mad that I was even asking if she had a key to get back into the room, which again, another red flag. Mm -hmm. Should have been thinking about that a little bit more. So I go to bed. I don't really think twice about the fact that she just freaked out at me. I was like, whatever, she's drunk. And I go to sleep. And if you know me, you'll know that I'm a really deep sleeper. Like, no one can wake me up. No sound will wake me up. And if it does, I will fall asleep immediately again. So what happened was I was passed out. And all of a sudden, I hear someone banging on the door quite hard. And, but then I kind of fall asleep again. I'm like, well, what can really be happening right now? And I fall asleep. And then again, I'm woken up, but this time I'm woken up by someone like physically shaking me awake. And I look up and I don't recognize the face. It's just a random guy. But then I start to piece it together and it's actually a guy who's working at the front desk of the hostel. So I'm like, what? Like what's going on? Like kind of not fully there at all. So then he tells me that my friend Emily is going crazy she's been like screaming knocking pounding on the doors like trying to get into our room i guess and freaking out waking every single person up in our 10 person dorm room so <laughs> at this point i'm like what the heck is going on like what's going on why is this even happening this is so dramatic for no reason and i get out of the room and she's furious literally fuming and I can't tell you why like she was just so drunk and she had had some bad things happen like previously in the year and like I won't touch on that but she was not in the best mental state I guess at this point so alcohol probably didn't help but she was already drunk so she's freaking out she's coming at me actually throwing punches at me and people are holding her back like actually had to grab her and pull her away from me so she didn't beat the living crap out of me yeah so i'm freaking out at this point because i'm in iceland i don't have a phone plan i don't have a sim card it's also i think a few hours ahead of toronto time so it was pretty late in the night at home for my family and i didn't know what to do at all i'm freaking out i can't reach my family because I can only text them and my parents had their cell phones off so I text my brother I tried calling him on FaceTime um, and he eventually picks up and then got my parents and I'm just crying on the phone because like what are you supposed to do when someone that you came on a trip with is trying to attack you <laughs> I mean it was honestly the craziest moment I've ever experienced like it was just like that doesn't that's not something that pops into your head when you think about going on a trip with someone yeah so after that happened she's been like held back by other people from our room from the hostel that are just trying to like calm her down at this point but she's still freaking out and the front guy the front desk guy tells me that he wants to call the police and i'm like oh i i mean she is acting pretty crazy but like i wouldn't like can we like avoid that because I don't think that's really necessary right now and he's like sure whatever like fine but if this gets any worse I'm gonna have to call the police yeah so then <laughs> then she ends up punching the guy at the front desk and at this point he didn't I don't think he even told me until after he called the police that he had called the police because he just got assaulted during work and I'm just sitting there on the phone with my parents just freaking out not really knowing what to do at this point and knowing that she was going to be kicked out of the hostel so I wouldn't be spending the trip with her here on out and yeah <laughs> so that was that night that happened the arrest I actually have footage of her getting arrested because we were all sitting down at the front desk watching when the police arrived and the security cameras were just open behind the front desk of this hostel and I took a video. I'll insert it to the side here if I think that's okay to do. Um, otherwise, 
you can just take my word for it that she was arrested by like seven mm -hmm. cops that came and yeah so she was out of the hostel that night I went to sleep kind of freaked out not sure what to do and that was that night the next morning I wake up and I don't really know how the rest of my week in Iceland is gonna go at this point I don't know what to do I know I'm not gonna go see go get her from jail because one we're not that close Two, she tried to attack me and so I didn't go to go I didn't go see her I didn't try to get her out of jail I was just trying to figure out how to make the most of the situation and what I should do from there on out and I had actually met someone who lives in Iceland who's originally from Italy and he was like I can take you on a cool hike tomorrow like let's do this hike it'll be a lot of fun and I met another Canadian girl in our room who also was well who was by herself so we end up, I end up going with the Italian guy on this hike. I'm a little bit concerned, I guess, because I was going by myself, but I did have my phone with me and there were a few people on the hike, so I wasn't super concerned, but in hindsight, it was a little bit dangerous to just go with a stranger on a hike. But um, I, he ended up being a great guy and he was super nice and we had a good day. Um, once I got back to my phone, I had seen all these messages flooding in from Emily and she was freaking out at me. Yeah, freaking out at me, even though she was the one who attacked me the night before. So she's mad that I didn't come get her from jail. She's freaking out saying she's going to leave. She's going to go home without me. And I just didn't reply at this point. I, I think later on in the evening I said, let's just talk about this when we see each other in person because we both had tickets to the Blue Lagoon the next day. So we had that plan and I said, she apologized a little bit and then I said, you can, you can apologize in person. You can talk to me about this when I see you in person. So we kind of left it like that and I ended up meeting up with the Canadian girl and we rented a car together. We did the Golden Circle, which is like a bunch of geysers and waterfalls and I ended up seeing the northern lights another night it was all in all just a good few days afterwards I took the car and drove out to the blue lagoon by myself and I saw Emily there she gave me like a strange look and didn't come up to me so I was like all right like I'm not gonna go approach her because last time <laughs> we came in contact, she was trying to attack me and I don't know what this girl's really capable of doing because she's a little bit crazy. So we don't talk the whole time that I'm at the Blue Lagoon. I see her there where it's, it's dark because we only got a slot at nighttime. So I'm sitting there at like one side of the lagoon and I see her, but we don't talk at all. I was waiting for her to come up and talk to me and apologize for being crazy, but she never did. So that was that and she texted me again the next day and I didn't reply because I wasn't interested in talking to her and that was kind of the trip. I ended up spending the whole time by myself um, with people I met, mostly that other girl from Canada who was super sweet and actually a lot younger. I think she was only 18 or 19 which was crazy that she was traveling on her own already. At this point I was 21 and it was still new to me. So we had a really good time. Like I saw amazing things in Iceland. It was one of the most amazing trips I've been on. It's such a cool country and I'd love to go back at some point. But um, yeah, that was the first time I ended up traveling solo. And then on our flight home, I'm sure you can imagine how awkward it must have been when we had to sit side by side together. Um, Emily came to the airport, I saw her there, and only then did she apologize to me properly. But it was like a little bit half-hearted and I could tell it wasn't the most sincere apology. She was mad at me for not coming to get her from jail. Um, but that wasn't something I was concerned about at all. I was mostly worried about myself and keeping safe and 
not dealing with someone who was a little bit mentally unstable at that point in time. So we fly home together. I just kind of like accepted her apology so the flight wouldn't be awkward and it wouldn't be as bad as it could have been. And we get back home. I go to my school and she returns back to work and whatever. And that was it. There is a lot, um, a lot of things that happen afterwards as well where that just speaks to how insane this girl is. <laughs> I don't know if I should really share the full details, but she ended up setting me up before the trip with um, someone she worked with and he was a manager at her place of work at the time and I had just met him once when I went to go see her at work before we left for Iceland and so she set me up with him and we were actually um, just texting a little bit here and there but we hadn't met up, hadn't gone on a date or anything and when I got back I was still talking to him just over text but nothing else had happened. I think we went on a date at one point and she texted me a few months later freaking out at me saying I can't see this guy and that she actually got pregnant from him after she set me up with him. So yeah that just goes to show how absolutely nuts she is. So yeah I think they ended up actually keeping the kid. He um he didn't want to from what he said to me but obviously I blocked him I blocked her and I stopped talking to him as soon as I found out that information because I was definitely not interested in being a part of that crazy psychotic relationship of whatever was going on with the two of them and she would harass me she would message me on snapchat instagram twitter like every form of social media facebook and I had to block her on everything because she wouldn't stop messaging me all these crazy messages saying that I had to that she was going to beat the crap out of me threatening me like with my life saying that she was going to kill me and I was honestly scared to go home to my hometown like on breaks after university because I didn't want to run into her for the longest time I would just be so nervous walking around my town that I would run into her at the mall or anything like that it was just a little bit scary and I was on edge because I don't really know what she's capable of especially with the threats I was thinking I might have to get a restraining order which luckily it hasn't come to that which is good so yeah <laughs> it's a bit of a rant um, but that was basically how the whole story went down and in hindsight I definitely wouldn't have picked to travel with a friend like her or acquaintance or whatever you would call her. Uh, I think traveling with a friend comes with a lot of struggles and challenges. It can be a really great experience, especially like groups of friends, it's usually a lot of fun. But um, I would say solo travel is the way to do it. I'm such a fan of traveling by yourself. I think it's the best experience. You meet so many people. If you're with friends, you're not really thinking about meeting other people. You're not in that position where you have to worry about finding company, but when you're by yourself, you're pushed out of your comfort zone and you make so many friends from all over the world. It's such a good experience. I would highly, highly recommend doing solo travel. I do hope that it doesn't take an experience like mine to push you to travel by yourself, although this is definitely what pushed me to to solo travel because I was really nervous and I didn't think I could do it by myself but after that I had so much strength and so much courage to just go off and do whatever I wanted to do travel by myself I knew I would figure it out because I figured it out when I was put in this really horrible situation and it worked out everything always does and I couldn't be happier that I got to go to Iceland regardless so that's the end of my story. Let me know if you want story time similar to this one. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I will link all of my social channels as well as my blog in the description. 
and I'm not sure when I'll have a post out next, but it will be coming soon. So just let me know what you want to see, and I will see you soon. Bye!